Okay. Thank you. So we are in the uh, the city of Waterdeep, and we just finished uh, defending the Yawning Portal Tavern from the Yawning Portal, literally. <laughs> and so you head back to your very, very luxurious and well-appointed um, rooms up in the North Ward. You hear some rumors, which we just covered, and... That said, you've got about three days of downtime before you get this idea, or before you get this message about being able to claim some magical items. So I would like to take a moment to let each of you uh, tell me something that happens over the course of those three days, and we can turn it into a full scene, or it can just be a description or some mix of the two. I just want to get some idea of what each of you are doing individually and what you're doing as a group during your downtime, uh, during which all you're doing is waiting for information to come in. Like, you know that more information is coming, and you're kind of trying to make a decision as to which avenue you want to take, but in the background, all of them are becoming open to you. So let's start from the bottom. Uh, Gail, what is something that happened over the last three days that is interesting for this party or for yourself personally? Uh, can I, can I say, uh, Come back to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. One hundred percent. Let's landed on one. Let's do Jeff. Jeff. Okay. Um, what is something that happened over the course of the last three days that you would like to do? All right. Calder has like for the last several months, it feels like, been hoofing it. Has been traveling. Has been out on the road, and like he's only been in the lap of luxury again for the first time in for the last three days, apparently. So he's very game to not be the adventurer for a half minute. Uh, and to that end, like, I want, like, I'm picturing him just being his noble self, like, remembering, like, remembering how to pot. And to that end, but he still prefers his new friends. So, like, there would definitely be, like, a montage of, of, uh, simultaneously, like, Kretha getting introduced to the lap of luxury, uh, not being a fan of being waited on hand and foot, definitely being a fan of desserts and coffee. Uh, well, let's 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 talk to Jen really quick. Um, this is this is part of Calder's scene. You'll get yours as well. Um, but how does Kretha respond to now several days? Like at first, it was a big surprise. It was a big culture shock. But now it's been a few days, and not only are the the appointments very very lovely, but also not only is the whole area very very lovely. But these folks are deferring to you. They are treating you and Calder like, like nobles. And this is probably Kretha's first real experience being A, doted on, and B, deferred to to this level. I'm curious yeah. how, she, uh, how she's reacting. She's still a little creeped out. Like, she feels like that it's right for them to de be deferring to Calder, but she still is a bit creeped out by being deferred to and like doted on um, by by these strangers. They aren't pushy um, about it, by the way. Yeah, um, that's a yeah. thing I want to mention. Like they're not trying to force services on you, but yeah. they are always right there. If you realize you need something, like you chipped a nail, and you're like, "Crap, one of my claws is chipped." You turn around. There's already someone there with a pair of clippers ready that to help you. Her. <laughs> and yeah, I'm sure there's at least one jump scare there. Yeah. No, it. What are you doing? Okay. They're trying to click your nails. But how do they know it just happened? You think? <laughs> what? Where do you think the people around us are here for? It's very weird. Um. Only because you have only because to do? they are literally being paid to do this. <laughs> Handsomely, do not insult, by the do way. not insult them by by refusing them. Accept the luxury. Him saying "do not insult them by refusing them" would make, basically make Kreta afraid to say no. Oh, oh no! My game. <laughs> <laughs> Which is gonna make this even more. But I kind of had a scene that wasn't the main scene that I wanted to do, but more just like a thing that could, could roll into this. All, that all is you. Part of them taking care of me and taking care of Stinky. Yep. Stinky has, having basically been 
kind of reborn in a sense. Murdered to death, yeah. Murdered to death. <laughs> Uh, goes through something that as a primal companion of the land doesn't often do because while while he is a frog he is not really a frog frog he goes into shed oh no <laughs> so what you're Ooh. seeing is this 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 large smushy frog who starts doing this weird bloating and smushing and bloating and moving its back feet up and like you can see Kreetha is just like just kind of helping and it's like it's freaking everybody else out it would freak every it would freak the poor poor servants who are trying to dote on this frog and like just absolutely because the thing is is that stinky is going to pull and the skin comes off not like a snake it's not like dry and like crinkly it's oh. it's globular and it's all going forward so there's this weird shudders and then he pulls it into his mouth and eats it <laughs> <laughs> and the poor people are like uh, do chat, I offer please? him a towel? <laughs> <Yeah>. oh. <laughs> and Krita's just kind of helping just getting water up and helping Wow, I did not realize that we were going to be a animal documentary podcast for for 60 seconds, but that is what has happened. And um, yeah, so sure, that may as well happen. <laughs> Meanwhile, Calder's like getting his nails done, nothing. looks over and is like, what? I have no yeah, response really to that. Hard to not lo look at Looks it. up and goes. Pretty gross. Gross. Moving on. Yeah, I, I, have, I have no response to that. Um, Gail, what is something? So I was going to ask, uh, so wow. for these three days, is it just Kreetha and Calder at the, uh, the hotel? No, or do you that like, was I was about to say. I, I, I didn't get to quite get to finish mine. Like, the, that's just part, that, like the living in the lab luxury was like a little part of it. I also specifically uh, invited Echo along yes. to, a, to also get swept up in the enjoyment, but also to have a, like a reclining like catch up moment with uh with echo to like explain what ha like to us to talk and like be friends and remind each other that we like I'm quite fond of your company would like to know, would like you to be okay. Oh yeah, no echo is would show up and be like get me the strongest you know massage monsieur you got and just like <laughs> enjoy the crap out of that you find someone with levels in barbarian <laughs> yes <laughs> deep tissue massage <laughs> but yeah would would be like echo you know comparing it to the other goblin in the room echo is a bit more used to um the the trappings of of being in a city versus being in the high end of the city versus the low end of the city and so like given the chance echo is like all in like hell yeah hand me that cucumber water like you know <laughs> go ahead and like touch up my cuticles yeah i burnt my hand two days ago it's fine whatever do what you can uh <laughs> but yeah and and i guess during because during all of this even you know getting nails done that sort of thing <laughs> There'll be that moment where it, where Echo's like, yeah, and then for this season we were doing a theme of like, you know, the changing colors of the leaves, and so all the costuming had to be redone, like telling Calder about the the circus mm. life, and then he'll stop and he'll look over, and he'll look back at his own hands, and he'll look over at Kreetha and look back at his own hands and be like, why do you have four fingers? <laughs> 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 Do you have five toes? Yes. What? Don't you? No. All the goblins from my tribe have, we all have three. Three fingers, four toes. <laughs> well, uh, Kritha, you're Batiri, right? I, we come from, from Chult. We, they, we, we, they we're different goblin. I, I never heard of goblin with. Have you ever, oh, it's called, oh. Oh, Echo, have you ever heard, have you, are you aware, uh, how much, I, mean, I don't mean to like, to goblin explain you, but are you, how much do you know about the Batiri? <laughs> Nothing at all. I, I don't really know anything about any goblin tribes outside of, you know, I, the uh, former Sunless. I had many, I had very few uh, places that I excelled in, in my studies, but uh, exotic animals and locations was definitely one that I excelled in, and it's one of the reasons I became an adventurer. 
and I will proceed to explain, like, uh, uh, to to echo in painstaking nerdy detail, because <laughs> this is Calder nerding out about something. But for the party at home, uh, Kreeth is going to be giving him such a look. Calder will explain, like the like the more mystical angle of Chult and how it is full of dinosaurs and necromancy. And like every every so, so often okay. Wow, a dinosaur. What's a dinosaur? <laughs> no, just, no, no, Echo's not interrupting Calder at all. Just every so often is just gonna side eye over to Kreeth and be like, this is bullshit or is he telling the truth? Like just like look give you a look and whether or not you nod or shake your head, we'll just turn back and just keep For listening. the most part, she would be nodding. <laughs> and then and when Calder gets to the Batiri, no. he'll he'll like look at Rita and like and please correct me if I'm wrong. They are a native uh they're the they're part one of the few natives of Chult. They're in their own society, they have their own uh their own uh structures, they're broken up into various tribes that each uh, revere the local wildlife, and they draw power from their from from the lar- from the large examples of local wildlife as their local totems. Yes, yes, I I will admit um there may have been some things that have changed. We kind of left Tolt, um because I am of fascinated. The I and the dinosaurs. It was a lot, but if um, we are ever in your home region, I am desperate to meet your tribe. Okay. <laughs> but how, like, okay, so do you, does your tribe still have a, an animal, like, creature, totem? Yes, yes, they are frogs. We are oh. of the, we are creatures of the swamp. We moved from, from the swamps of Tot to the swamps of the island. So we moved, we managed to, um, how do I put this polite? Escape by boat. We left very quickly. Um, the, there wasn't much of them, uh, my ancestors, but they managed to get on boat and leave. There had been a very bad disagreement uh, with one of the other tribes, and they their their animal with the dinosaur, the ones with teeth. That we teeth. have to be a little more specific. <laughs> big big lizard, big lizard, big teeth, very angry. Uh, the bigger, very little the arms one. though. <laughs> oh, the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Really do with the arms. It the was king, funny. The king of the lizards. The tyra- He'll proceed to nerd out about what a tyra- T-Rex is. Is that what you people call them? That- <laughs> All right. But anyway, we escaped. Uh, and uh, they, not we, they, my ancestors, uh, uh, escaped, uh, started their own small small village and now it's big thing all along coast in all the swamps in all of the areas there's some that went and and headed to caves and rocky areas and they've kind of got their own thing going on and you'll know how it is you just kind of spread if you're not being killed you spread ah uh, no it was in the sunless it was a lot of the being killed sort of thing you, yes. they didn't even have you know i wasn't there for a whole decade but when i was there as a kid yeah, we're always vying for control of percentages of the citadel between us and the kobolds. Not to mention the fucking villagers outside. You look very young for your age. How old do you think I am? As <laughs> he like lounges back. <laughs> <laughs> you just said you were in there for a decade. No, no, I've been away for a decade. If you've been away for a decade, you're at least decade old. That long time to not die. I'm, uh, I'm, as of last winter, I'm 16. You're older than my dad ever got to be. Yes, and again, weird. older than the normal, like, there's a difference between lifespan of goblins who hang out in cities and do stuff versus goblins who grow up with zombie T-Rexes. <laughs> so, yes. yes. It turns out the life expectancy of a goblin in Chult or the surrounding vicinity is pretty low, like lower than 16, but it's not because goblins in that area don't die of natural causes. They don't exist. <laughs> um, so. And then, so Echo's gonna lean forward and just be like, so how old are you? I'm five. I, I just reached my... Now that will make drink. Calder, like, spit out his drink. <laughs> uh, well, You're five! I have had my... 
I have had my ceremony and everything. I am full adult. So I think this is another one of three fingers, four <laughs> fingers thing, because in my tribe, you're not an adult until you're nine. Really? Yeah. Really? That is... You're a lot taller than, like, I was at five, so... We grow fast. We run fast, we grow fast, we... Die Probably fast, survival it, mechanism. <laughs> I don't really know how old we can get. Oh, man. There was... Oh, Calder saw her, too. Actually, I think you were the one who killed her. Um, there was an <laughs> old crone of a goblin that was in the endless. She was, like, 63. Ancient! <laughs> yeah. I like Went up, like a, went up like a, you know, dry tinder, but. <laughs> I so. Calder will laugh a little uncomfortably at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. I hope I will live, live long as you and get to see many, many more things. I, I have certainly seen many more things than any of my people have, um, which I don't think that was their original intention but uh, you know that's what you get for sending someone to a weird thing called fortune journey i am just I mean, aghast that you are that young and you got that far you're giving me shit for uh for being able to set people to set turtles on fire and you're able to summon a beast in the land and shoot a crossbow better than i've ever seen at five all right then tiefling how old are you I am 26. You young whippersnappers. <laughs> you don't look a day over 23. No. How old? Okay, I'm getting to understand that there is difference in ages, right? I, During... I'm understanding this, that 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 different, different species have different age remains. So, <laughs> I'm adult. Echo adult. I'm assuming you adult? Uh, Please humans adult. reach a Human, uh, I age like a human, and I was raised among humans. My adulthood is reached at around <laughs> age 16 to 18. Barnabas um, <laughs> is going to go ahead, and you're all hanging out at the the um, the inn that you're at. Not the inn, the, the, yeah. the, the, the hotel, spa. right? Yeah. The, the yeah. fancy super spa so, slash inn. Barnabas. Uh, like, there's, like a, there's like a giant like coffee table covered in cakes. At this Barnabas, point. Barnabas will go ahead and enter and sort of join your conversation. Um, one thing to note, the staff of the hotel do not give him any services and seem to very deliberately not look at him. Um, and it doesn't look like an uncomfortable thing. It just looks like, it's not like, oh, gross, there's this guy. It's more Someone, of a, he, as far as they're concerned, as far as they're concerned, he is invisible. So they walk around him to get to you, but never speak to him or comment on his appearance. So he walks into the conversation as you are um, talking about uh, relative ages. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, this will be good. How old are you, Mr. Barnabas? Calder starts to take his drink. He he looks down at you and says, low three digits. And then, you, like, he's every a little, like, three he's a little over a hundred. Yeah. Wait a second, I'm the relatively oldest person here? <laughs> Echo says, I'm fucking middle-aged! Here to all you fucking youngos. <laughs> I could not have guessed that. Does that mean that you are uh, robbing the cradle, as I heard <laughs> someone say? Like, his that's his what, face. Oh, no, 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 that's what I was told his face, by the brothel worker around the corner. His face goes entirely <laughs> blank for a count of maybe five, <laughs> and then he continues the conversation as though he did not hear what you just said. And I was uh, talking to so Echo only, when I said it. I so. will le I, I will very. I will very quietly lean in his direction. Say the uh, say the name. Hyacinth, and sit back up, <laughs> saying nothing more on the topic, so he knows who to blame. So he 
will um, mention that he he uh, saw this message that uh, is in your your mailbox, and he was bringing it up to you because he thought that would be better because it has to do with the uh, the merchant of magical items that you are to meet. And Barnabas thought perhaps uh, he would go ahead and uh, tag along. You notice that he's got a false nose on, and it's not entirely convincing. I would go so far as to say, not at all convincing, but I'm not, I am not going to mention it. Um, Echo is going to, you know, once done with the, you know, nails done, finished off the last string, turns around, and, you know, he's suggesting that we get going. Echo's going to go like, oh, no, 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 no. And, like, start pulling out his own disguise kit. And <laughs> that is exactly Barnabas. what I was hoping you would say in response to that. Yes. So, no, 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 no. Um, go ahead and roll uh, a proficiency check with your disguise kit. Because Barnabas's face is well known right now. Like, even even uh, Echo was kind of sort of not facing the artist. as as the But Barnabas's face was absolutely clear. Uh, so what, what, anyway, someone can do something with, you know... Um, how to roll a proficiency check. Um, so, like, but which... I'm, like, dexterity? Because I'm, like, trying to... Yeah, like, dex is, is, is perfectly fine. So dex plus proficiency. Yeah. Our proficiency currently is three. Yes, because we're level six. Oh, you kidding me? Come on! <laughs> Jesus. So here's what oh I'm going to say. You you work on it for a little while. You work on it for a little while and you're like, "Yes, no, maybe he only yes." Looks more handsome. You turn around and yes, um Kretha and Calder, you notice that she ha or that he has not um disguised Barnabas. What he has done is made him up to look stunning. <laughs> Like, he uh, looks like he is going to turn heads like this. His braids Echo? have braids. E Echo? What? Did you understand the assignment? But he looks like a different handsome dwarf. <laughs> he looks very handsome. And like, very regal. And very regal. One could say almost kingly. Oh, yeah, no, okay, I see what you're saying. <laughs> All right, roll again. <laughs> try that one again. I want to see Perhaps if you mess it up one more magic? time. Come on, come on. If all else fails, I will use magic. <laughs> I mean, we could just... There we go. You. <laughs> there we go. That yes. I would rather not have to apply invisibility to... to the the thing, thing is... is if we just put cake on his face, would, would Echo just eat it? <laughs> so yeah, as Echo starts no, like but thinking, rubbing no, but him up, he might. just say, sorry, I got a little lost in your eyes there. <laughs> Let me do a real job here. <laughs> so when it comes to disguising dwarves, it actually isn't as difficult as you would think because a lot of folks, unfortunately, see the height and the beard and just kind of, their eye just kind of slides off, right? It's, it's a dwarf. Dwarves are trustworthy. They're not a danger usually. So they just kind of, you know, it's not difficult to make a nondescript dwarf. So yes, you are able to to disguise Barnabas in such a way that it will take a 19 insight or perception to um, break that disguise if someone had any reason to, to do so. So you have an appointment. The appointment is at one of the suites at, oh man, anybody who is still in chat, give me the name of an inn or a tavern, please. Because I need a place for them to meet up and it's going to be Maybe kind of a mid-range level place. Some place that's not a super dive, but definitely not hoity-toity. If you're in chat, give me some ideas, please. Gail gives the same one that Gail always gives. <laughs> hey, you, you gotta... <laughs> yeah, um, um, so we'll, we... we'll, we'll figure out the name of it as we go. Um, go ahead. Say... What, what, what do you do in the meantime? Yeah, because that was Calder's, you know, during the three days thing, right? Yes. Yeah. So, so yeah, what do you got for me? For us, for everybody. I, I had one where, um, so Echo would have noted down the date and time that the local temple of um, uh, Tamora is doing their 
you know, Equinox thing, and Echo would invite, you know, anybody who wants to come with him to come and, you know, do the... It's like, I think you eat cakes at this ceremony. It's a little... I haven't ever done it before. But would invite everybody to come to, you know, this religious ceremony with him. Uh, Calder would probably have politely declined. Great, that would have been super interested considering uh, most of the religion she understands. Quick, quick sound check. Someone's giving me some pretty big wind sounds right now. That's probably me. Excellent. Okay, sorry to, to interrupt. Please continue, Jen. Well, Kreetha would have come definitely because most of her experience of religion involves uh, fear worshiping giant lizards. So this would have been a nice difference. <laughs> Change of pace. Does Barnabas come? Uh, yes, yes, he does. The uh, the the name of the tavern is going to be the Broken Barb, which is a combination <laughs> from Psychanthrope and Highbane. Mm -hmm. I, okay. I liked I liked the alliteration of it. So uh, you're going to make your way down to the Broken Barb, which uh, is I'm going to go ahead and pull well, the water deep map can, back up. Can we get details on what the uh, just the religious service? What is that like? Yeah, I, you yeah. Know, I don't I don't think oh, it's yeah, too complicated. Like they show up. Like Echo is wearing his holy symbol more. You know, like outside he usually has it like tucked in, but he has an amulet that looks like a gold coin with a smiling half uh, halfling woman's face on it, and it's you know the temple is to Tamora. Her likeness is all over the place. Um, it's actually kind of more of a tavern atmosphere in most temples of Tamora because she is the, also the goddess of adventuring. So um, I wouldn't, I don't, I don't think two goblins and a giant frog would get, you know, any weird looks in a uh, temple of adventurers. Yeah, maybe some some sweet cakes to celebrate the uh, changing of the seasons. Like, if, if Kreetha asks any questions, Echo, like, has next to no knowledge. Like, he's very new to this whole religious thing, too. Barnabas attends and is a little bit less, uh, a little bit less stiff this time. Now that, now that he's a little bit more anonymized, he, you know, he takes a few drinks and, and talks to some folks and actually seems to be having a pretty good time by the end of the, by the end of the ritual. This is his kind of crowd. I mean, if it's a if it's a a place that's kind of like a tavern, you know, he seems yeah. to be uh, by the end a little bit a little bit more relaxed, a little bit less uptight. Yeah, but Echo will throw a uh, a gold into. There's usually a fountain or something because she's the goddess of good luck. Her symbol is a coin. I'm betting there's a wishing well here or fountain of some sort. 100%. Uh, throw a coin in, make a prayer, just. Um, Something quick along the lines of uh, Clarion's family needs him back. So any luck you can send my way is appreciated. Kratha wouldn't pray, but she would see Echo uh, doing the, the coin thing and reach in and fumble out a coin. Probably not a gold. She does not have that kind of money. She has some gold, but she's she's... Not nearly as, like, I'm so glad that, that Calder is picking up the tab. <laughs> you know, uh, so she would probably put in a silver um, and, and like, that, and, and like offer it, like, to, to Stinky, and Stinky would kind of nudge the hand, and they could kind of go in together. I'm going to uh, say that each of you get a plus one on your next d20 roll. Hmm. You're gonna have to remember that because I won't. So, okay. yeah, Calder each will of willingly you... back. Uh, Caller will willingly neglect himself in that bonus. Absolutely, <laughs> and that makes perfect sense for Calder. So, he has a different set of religious priorities, and the decor of Waterdeep begins to change over the course of this festival as well. You know, kind of a not quite Halloween, but you know, sort of fall aesthetic is beginning to, to enter the atmosphere. Waterdeep is, if nothing else, a deeply capitalist society, which means <laughs> that when there is a holiday, they will exploit the hell out of that holiday. So while you are all having your very nice sort of solemn autumn religious service in the, in the form of pints of ale and whatnot, there are other parties happening elsewhere 
uh, folks who are celebrating the equinox just because it is an excuse to drink and talk to people. Can't fault that, really. Pritha would actually probably ask both um, Calder and probably Barnabas, uh, like, so this is obviously not what I do, but uh, it's very interesting. What do you do? Um, one second. I just noticed that you all gain an advantage on your next, uh, your next role as well, because the community just finished the 10,000 community point advantage oh, wow. challenge. So nice. your next, cho this is not your next one. This is a floating advantage that lasts until you use it. I'm not going to put a new challenge up until all of you do it, including okay. M, but, <laughs> but... You now have a floating advantage. You just have to note down. It's a point of inspiration, yeah? They just gave you a point of inspiration, so I wanted to make sure that you all mark that down. Um, Jen, can you ask Kreeth this question one more time, please? So, it's not what I do, but uh, it's very fascinating. Do you do anything? Anything? Like, anything? Like, for... For the equinox, for for the time, it's like it's time of like you know, beginning of winter and cold times coming, and 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 harvest of, you know, we we harvest the the we we pull the the all of the bounty of the swamp. Dwarfs don't Very much bounty. notice the passing of seasons in our caves. Oh, it's pretty much always the same temperature in the deep. That's that's fair. You do have holidays, don't you? Of course. <laughs> oh, good, good. Just Usually surrounding it. historic battles. Oh, okay. Sometimes against goblins. Sorry. No, that's fair. That's fair. Um. Yes, that's fair. Um, as the sun sets for this this uh, particular evening, folks go out and when the last rays of the sun sort of dip below the walls of Waterdeep, folks begin to light floating lanterns oh, so and pretty. set them loose. And because this is Waterdeep, in addition to the, the hundreds and thousands of, of twinkling lights in the sky, there are those who could afford to, to do a little bit more. And there are magical lanterns, nothing too gaudy, nothing too bright, but tracing their way in intricate patterns in the sky with iridescent colors in between the the simple floating lamps. Echo will uh, lean over to Kreeth and be like, well, we, we kind of do something like this at Neverwinter at the, uh, the winter solstice. Uh, people light lanterns and they send it down, you know, the mouth of the rivers out into the, uh, the ocean. I've never seen anything so pretty. Yeah, how are, how are they just gonna like keep? Flo what happens when they come back down? Like with, with the when you send them out into the water, they just like you know will get swallowed up by the waves eventually. Like what happens with these when they come back down? Perhaps fire. It is followed. By, it is followed by the annual. By the annual. To, uh, actually, is is heralded by the annual two weeks setting. Uh, uh, putting out of the autumn wildfire. <laughs> oh no! It is very pretty, though. It is. We don't have anything quite like that. Oh, so pretty. So, <laughs> let's go ahead and move forward. Yes, that was that was pleasant. I like that. Yeah, me too. 